everyone. Holy crap! Welcome to probably the most special episode of my YouTube channel that I have ever done for multiple reasons. Welcome to episode 200. Welcome to the Cincy Awards, the 2017 Cincy Awards celebrating my favorite purchases in toys and action figures for the entire year. I'd like to also say thank you to everyone that is watching this video, to everyone that has watched any previous videos that I've ever put up. I also crossed the milestone that I didn't even think I would ever achieve when I first started this thing. I just passed 1 million views on YouTube, which is insane. I'd just like to extend a huge, huge thank you. What you see in front of you here, these are not my top 17 of 17. These are all the runners up, but let's get on with it. Enough jibber jabbering around. Let me start by saying that I had a very, very difficult time this year picking out my top figures of 2017. There were so many figures that came out that I love so much and I collect so many different figure lines that it was very, very tough to pick and choose which ones were my absolute favorite. One of the things that you will notice here is that there are no hot toys on this bar. Another thing that you will notice is that in this episode, you will not see any Hot Toys figures. I decided this year to break up the Hot Toys and to not include them in the same video as the rest of the figures. I didn't think it was really fair because the Hot Toys price point of those is at a much, much higher price point than pretty much anything else that I collect. What you'll see here are my top 17 figures, my top 17 purchases of 2017, minus all Hot Toys. The Hot Toys and Sideshow figures will have their own episode. That'll be episode, I think, 202. But what you see here are the runners up to all of my favorite figures of 2017. So let's get started. I'm gonna go through these one by one and tell you why I like these so much. But again, these are the runners up to the 2017 Cincy Awards. First things first, I'm enjoying some wine. Why am I drinking wine? Because I ran out of beer. So <laughs> I'm enjoying a little bit of wine for this since it is a special occasion. But let's get started. Again, these are all my runners up. I love, love all these figures. And I had a very tough time ranking them and deciding which ones made the top 17 and which ones just missed out. So let's start over here with this Mezco Deadpool. I'm a huge, huge fan of Mezco figures. And I'm a huge fan of this figure right here. This is an awesome, awesome Mezco figure. If you're looking to get into Mezcos, I think that this is a fantastic figure to get started with. Lots of accessories, excellent likeness, great use of soft goods. What can I say? It's just an excellent figure all around and an excellent figure if you'd like to start your Mezco collection. So barely, barely just missed the list, but there's the Mezco Deadpool. Here's the 12 inch Marvel Legends Incredible Hulk figure. Again, fantastic figure. It's huge, it's gigantic, it's got a lot of weight to it, it's got great articulation, excellent sculpt, great paint apps, comes with an alternate head, and I got this one on sale actually on Black Friday, so even better. Moving on to NECA. I had a really, really hard time not including this in my top 17 because I love this figure so much. This is the NECA Aliens Vasquez figure. There's the smart gun right there, it's got the burst effect. Just an amazing, amazing amount of detail for a $20 figure. I love NECA. I think they do an outstanding job. I think you get a great amount of value and detail and sculpt and paint for $20 plus. dollars. I just think that they're awesome looking figures. They look great on a shelf. So there is Vasquez right there. Moving on to a Marvel Legends figure. I know that this figure made a lot of people's top 10s, but this is the Ares. Before the Thor Ragnarok wave, this figure was only available as a Build-A-Figure and that figure went for a lot of dollars in the 200 to 300 dollar range but i'm just very very happy that they decided to reissue this as a single pack figure it looks fantastic marvel legends aries moving on to another NECA figure this is the jungle demon predator i am a sucker for translucent plastic and this makes great use of translucent plastic to give it that cloaked effect that the predator had in the movie but just an awesome looking figure looks great great sculpt and again, I love translucent plastic. Another NECA figure. Here is the exploding head alien xenomorph. And look at the amount of sculpt and detail you get for your money. It's an amazing, amazing job sculpting these things. And I absolutely love NECA 
for what they bring to the table, especially for these aliens and predator figures. But just an excellent, excellent figure all around, especially that head sculpt. Moving on to our first Black Series figure, Qui-Gon Jinn. One of my favorite parts of The Phantom Menace, one of my favorite characters in the prequels. I mean, that looks just like Liam Neeson. They just did a great job with the sculpt and the paint right here, but I think this is an awesome figure. Just a great, great Black Series figure. Thank you, Hasbro, for finally making this Qui-Gon Jinn six-inch figure. Jules Winfield from Pulp Fiction. This one is by Diamond Select, and I gotta say, look at the detail on this figure, and if you're not aware, the price point on this figure is extremely affordable. I think I got this one for like $14, but it does come with lots of accessories. The gun, the soda, Big Kahuna Burger full and the Big Kahuna Burger half eaten, and the briefcase, which we still don't know what's inside there. Might be Marcellus Wallace's soul. Great face sculpt there of Samuel L. Jackson, and just a great, great figure for a very low price point. Moving on to a DC Multiverse figure. I really, really liked the entire Steppenwolf wave from Justice League, but this was the figure that I liked the most, the Flash figure. I just like the character design, and I just think it's a great figure. So, the DC Multiverse Flash figure from the Steppenwolf wave. Another Black Series figure here. Here is the Scarif Stormtrooper. I think that's the, what, Captain or Commander? This is from Rogue One, and it's just uh, an excellent design. I think the Scarif Stormtrooper might be my favorite Stormtrooper design from any movie so far. So this was one of the ones that I had a hard time keeping outside the top 17, but once you see my top 17, you'll understand there's a lot of great figures in there as well, but this one just barely missed the list. Moving on to Yondu, Marvel Legends Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2. Really, really love this figure. I think it looks great. Great sculpt, excellent paint, and that face sculpt looks a lot like Michael Rooker. So I just think they did a great job on this figure, and I really, really like this figure. Moving on to a Star Wars figure, Rathtar and Balatik 2-pack. I did not know that I was going to like this that much, but I found this on clearance at GameStop for like $7, and I am so very, very happy that I picked this up because I just think it looks great. It was a random pickup and one that I really, really enjoyed. Moving on to a Transformers figure, a Titans Return Blitzwing. So I was a huge fan of the original Blitzwing in G1. I love the Triple Changers Blitzwing and Astro Train. And the original Blitzwing that came out, I think it was for Thrilling 30 or Generations, just did not do it for me. It didn't really look like Blitzwing. But this one right here looks fantastic. I think that uh, Hasbro's done a great, great job with the Titans Return line and now Power of the Primes to really bring back that G1 look and feel. But when I look at this, I see Blitzwing. So just an awesome, awesome Voyager figure. Excellent, excellent job all around. And um, again, just barely missed out on my top 17 of the years. I have a vehicle here. It's a three and three quarter inch vehicle. I picked this one up. It's the TIE Silencer from The Last Jedi. And I am a sucker for these three and three quarter inch vehicles. I used to have a lot of vehicles. I had to sell them when we moved here to Ohio from Texas. And I'm very, very happy to be picking these up again. I think they did a great, great job. The vehicles for The Last Jedi are much, much better in my opinion than the vehicles from The Force Awakens. So I just think that they took a lot more time and effort in the sculpt, in the paint, even the figure itself, the three and three quarter inch figure. I know it's five points of articulation, but it's a great looking figure. That's a great looking face sculpt. It looks like Adam Driver. They just did a great job with this and it fits perfectly into the cockpit. It's not like you have to bend them around or squeeze them in like you did with the Force Awakens figures. I would highly, highly recommend this TIE Silencer uh, vehicle, especially if you could find it on clearance. But the TIE Silencer from The Last Jedi. All right, and finally, these are my two favorite purchases from the WWE Elite Collection. This year, I bought a lot of WWE Elite figures, but when I sat down and looked at all my figures, I think these were the two that I liked the most when they came out. So first things first is this Ric Flair figure. Probably one of the best uses of soft goods on any WWE Elite figure ever. This was the Ric Flair from WrestleMania when he wrestled Shawn Michaels. It was his retirement match. And then I also really, really like this Kevin Owens, mostly because the face sculpt was a huge improvement on the previous Kevin Owens figure that came out. 
And um, it also came with the first time we had seen the Universal Championship and this cool like presentation table when they first gave him that belt. So I just thought that was a great figure. I really, really enjoyed getting that figure when he first came out. But uh, those were my two favorite WWE Elite figures of 2017. But there you have it. These are all my runners up. Let's get on to my favorite 17 figures of 2017. All right, my number 17 favorite purchase of the year is the Black Series Tusken Raider. Look at the face sculpt on this. I just think they did a fantastic job with the sculpt on this figure, the soft goods. It looks amazing. The details and the head wraps, look at this. But there's the number 17 figure in my 2017 Cincy Awards, the Black Series Tusken Raider. All right, number 16 goes to The Last Night Voyager Megatron. I did not really enjoy Transformers The Last Night as a movie. I thought it was pretty bad. But they did a tremendous job with the figures in this line, especially this Megatron figure. I just think it looks fantastic. I did enjoy the character design for Megatron in The Last Night. I just didn't enjoy the dialogue or acting or pretty much anything else in that movie. Uh, but I do appreciate the character design for the bots in that movie. So this was also my favorite last night movie bot that I bought, but um, Megatron right there. All right, number 15 goes to another Star Wars Black Series figure. This is the Commander Gree. This one had a lot of things working for it. Specifically the fact that they decided to make more prequel figures. The other thing I had working for it was the paint apps. Look at the detail in the paint apps on this figure. The wearing on the armor. The camouflage. There were just a lot of layers of paint, a lot of applications on this figure. They just did a tremendous job on it. So it's a great, great figure. Commander Gree Black Series figure. All right, number 14 on my list. I got this one the second to last day in 2017. And I gotta say, a lot of YouTubers have reviewed this, included it on their best of lists. And a lot of people have said that this is the best Iron Man Marvel Legends figure that they've ever produced. And I gotta say, I do agree. I think they did a fantastic job on this figure with the face sculpt, with the articulation, with the body proportions. This is the all new, all different Avengers Iron Man from the Black Panther wave. This is the only figure that does not come with a build a figure piece in that wave. And it's by far my favorite figure in that wave. I purchased this one, the Black Panther, the Air Killmonger, but this figure right here is the standout to me. All right, number 13. So if you've been watching my videos this year, you'll know that I hit a point at some point this year where I said that I was going to be not collecting Marvel Legends anymore. When I got to this figure right here, it changed my mind about things. This is the Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure Sandman, and what can I say? It's an amazing figure. This is an absolutely amazing figure. Look at the detail in the arms there. There's the close-up of the face sculpt and the hair. Just an awesome figure all around. Probably one of, if not my favorite Marvel Legends figure in my entire collection. Not just this year, but my entire collection. All right, number 12, we have the Mezco 112 Collective Tiger Stripe Wolverine figure. My favorite comic book when I was a kid was the X-Men, and this was the X-Men from the 90s, the Jim Lee era, the X-Men cartoon. It looks like it stepped right out of the pages of the book, but it is a fantastic looking figure. I just think they did a great, great job all around on this figure. Comes with a few different head sculpts. I like the snarling head sculpt there. But uh, there is my number 12 on my list. The Mezco 112 Collective Tiger Stripe Wolverine. All right, so that brings us to number 11. This figure right here is the reason that I couldn't make a top 10 list. I was originally going to do a top 10 list of 2017, like everyone else. But I saw this figure and I couldn't not include him in my top 10. This is the quarter scale NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michelangelo figure. 
Look at the detail in the paint, the little turtle freckles on his face, the use of soft goods for the bandana. I have a couple of these quarter scale figures that have Michelangelo, I have Leonardo. I still need to purchase the Raphael and the Donnie, but uh, I love these figures. NECA, amazing, amazing job on their face sculpt, on their detail. Just a great, great figure all around. But there is the number 11 favorite purchase of the year for me, quarter scale NECA Mikey. All right, if you're a Transformers fan, you might hate the Michael Bay movies, but I gotta say, for this masterpiece Transformers Optimus Prime figure, good lord, look at the amount of detail that they went into in designing and sculpting this figure. Just an excellent, excellent job all around. This figure has die cast to it. It's well made, ratcheted joints, lots of cool accessories. You could use the energy sword, you could use the, the gun there. You can change the face sculpt out to his non-armored face plate. And obviously you could transform him into his alt mode, his truck mode. Masterpiece Transformers Optimus Prime. All right, number nine. So you have not seen this figure yet because I bought it on New Year's Eve. I bought it at Comics to Games. This was part of my haul that day. And this is the DC Icons two pack with Doomsday and Superman. Right before this guy died. I've been eyeing this two pack for quite some time now and Comics to Games, shout out to Comics to Games by the way, had a nice, nice sale on their action figures, 30% off. So I was able to pick this one up at a very, very nice price. But I picked this one up mostly for the Doomsday because I think that Doomsday looks absolutely stunning. Just look at the detail in the face. It's got decent articulation, excellent paint, excellent sculpt, but just an all around beautiful looking Doomsday figure. Probably the best Doomsday figure I have ever seen. So I knew I had to have it and I couldn't pass up on it when it was on sale like that. But there is also the other half of this two pack, Superman fighting to the death versus Doomsday. Comes with this really cool base, these rocks. But this is an awesome, awesome two pack. Very, very happy I picked this one up. But it's the DC Icons Doomsday Superman two pack. All right, here's number eight, my eighth favorite purchase of 2017. 2017 was not only the year of Mezco for me, it was also the year of SH Figure Arts. I did not have that many SH Figure Arts to start the year, but I have quite a few now, and this was one of my favorites. It's the Doctor Strange SH Figure Art, the deluxe figure with these flame effects. Everything about this figure is beautiful. From the paint apps and the face, an excellent face sculpt. Great, great job with the effects here. I think that these effects, these magic effects that you can attach to the figure, were actually better done than the Hot Toys version. So, great job to SH Figure Arts for that. And then obviously the flames here. I really, really love this figure. The SH Figure Arts Doctor Strange. If you can find this on sale still, Barnes & Noble had a great, great sale on this. And I got it for like 40 some dollars. But if you could still find this on sale, I absolutely recommend it. It's an excellent, excellent figure and a great figure to start your SH Figure Arts collection. All right, lucky number seven, my seventh favorite purchase of 2017. I gotta say, if 2017 was the year of Mezco and the year of SH Figure Arts for me, I think 2018 might be the year of Storm Collectibles for me because I bought this Storm Collectibles Scorpion while I was in Dallas, Texas, and I absolutely love this figure. As soon as I got this out of package and started posing them around, I immediately wanted the Sub-Zero and the Reptile and all other figures that Storm Collectibles makes for Mortal Kombat. I think that this is such a well done figure. It's so well made. It's got great paint apps. I got this uh, bloody version here. It does come in a non-bloody version as well. But you could change out the head sculpts. You can have it with the Mortal Kombat 2 look like right there. You can put that in to give it the Mortal Kombat 1 look or you can put in the skull to give it that fatality. And I actually, <laughs> actually kind of like posing the skull like that where it's just the skull doing the uh, fatality there. But absolutely love these Mortal Kombat figures by Storm Collectibles. Again, 
I cannot wait to get the Sub-Zero, the Reptile, and all of the other figures in this line. Such a tremendous job with these. The Storm Collectibles, Scorpion. Number six, are you kidding me? Another Bayverse Transformers figure? It's the Masterpiece Bumblebee figure, but it is such an amazingly well done Masterpiece figure. Tons of detail, excellent articulation. There's the face, you could put that little battle mask down. There is die cast in the feet as well to give it some good balance in posing it. The fact that I like this one and the Optimus Prime so much makes me so excited to get the Barricade that's coming out this year. Uh, that's one of my most anticipated figures for 2018 is the Masterpiece Barricade from the Bayverse movies. Uh, I will be doing a, a video upcoming in the next few episodes where I go over all of my most anticipated figures of 2018, go over some of the things that I've already pre-ordered, and just talk about all the different lines that I collect since I collect so many lines. So again, one of my favorite purchases of the year, number six, Bumblebee Masterpiece Transformers. All right, we are in top five territory, ladies and gentlemen. So, my fifth favorite purchase of 2017 is a Mayfex figure. It's the Nightmare Batman. This figure is so well done for so many different reasons. Excellent face sculpt, tons, tons of accessories. It's an amazing figure, especially if you have some of the other Batman v Superman Mayfex figures, and I'll explain why. But first of all, let me just give you a look at this figure. Such a well done figure all around, great accessories, excellent detail, excellent paint. You can see in the, the coat there, they did a great job painting the leather there to look kind of worn and dirty like it should. The straps on the gun, the straps on the binoculars are made of like a leather material. But the icing on the cake for this figure, and the reason why it's my fifth favorite purchase of the year, is because it comes with accessories that make other Mafex figures even better. So let me bring this guy in. This is the Armored Batman figure. The Armored Batman figure does not come with this head sculpt, and it does not come with this Kryptonite Spear. Both of those accessories, the Kryptonite Spear, this broken head sculpt here, came with the Nightmare Batman. The Nightmare Batman also comes with a bunch of different hands for other figures. It comes with an empty Batman cowl that Superman can hold. It's just an amazing, amazing figure. And anytime you can buy a figure that has accessories for other figures, you're just giving me value. I think that this Batman by Mafex might give you the best value for the money you invest in it. So there you go. Take it for what it's worth. It's an excellent figure. I hope you buy it. I hope you enjoy it. But this is the Mafex Nightmare Batman figure. And again, if you already own the Armored Batman, if you own the Superman, this is an absolute 100% must-have, in my opinion. We are already at number four. I feel like this is going by really, really fast. I'm either not talking about these figures enough, or I'm having too much fun doing it. So here is number four. This was my favorite Marvel Legend figure of the year. But it is the Vulture with the Build-A-Figure wings. I know that this was on a lot of people's top 10 lists. Hasbro knocked it out of the park this year with Build-A-Figures. Just an excellent job, so I can't say enough about this figure. The only thing that would have made this better is an unhelmeted Michael Keaton head sculpt. But I know at that point when you're using people's likenesses, you have to pay lots of likeness dollars. So I understand why they didn't do it. I'm just saying, it would have probably made this my number one figure of the entire year if they had included the Michael Keaton head sculpt. But number four ain't bad once you see my top three. So Marvel Legends Vulture with Vulture Build-A-Figure Wings. All right, my third favorite purchase of the year is SH Figuarts Harley Quinn from the Suicide Squad movie. Probably some of the best articulation and posability of any figure line. 2017, the year of SH Figure Arts for me, the year of Mezco's, and uh, I happened to buy both SH Figure Arts and Mezco for this character. So, great, great job there. My third favorite figure of the entire year, SH Figure Arts Harley Quinn. Number two. So if you watched my collection video and you saw my NECA figures, you'll know how much I absolutely love this figure. This was 
technically a reissue. This Alien Queen NECA figure had come out before, but uh, it was reissued this year. So I considered it for the 2017 awards and uh, I purchased it in 2017 and it was technically new in 2017 with that reissue, but I cannot say enough about this figure. It is the NECA Alien Queen figure and it's so, so well done. It's huge, it's gigantic. It's got so many different paint apps on it. It's got so much sculpting on it. And the face and the teeth. And that tongue with the teeth. Look at the teeth. Translucent teeth, green slime-like paint on it. I absolutely love this figure. This is one of my favorite figures in my entire collection. Everything included. All years included. I love this thing. So, I can't talk enough about this. Seeing this makes me want to go buy the power loader. But this is my second favorite purchase of the entire year. Let me get a good upshot right there. The NECA Alien Queen figure. Go out and get this thing. If you loved aliens, if you love collecting the NECA Alien figures, this is a must-have. You've got to get this in your collection. It is tremendous. And that brings us to my favorite purchase of the entire year of 2017. I can't call it the year of Mezco for me if I don't have a Mezco figure as my favorite purchase of the year. This figure right here, the Punisher by Mezco, is the figure that sent me down that slippery slope. Is the figure that made me buy so many Mezco figures this year. This is the perfect figure. This is the perfect Punisher figure. I love the Punisher. I love the comic book. I've been a fan for a long time. I really, really enjoyed the Netflix show this year. And just all things considered, all of the accessories you get, the guns that you get, the expressions on the face, the wear on the Punisher armor there, makes this Mezco figure the perfect Punisher and the perfect figure. So this was my number one purchase of the entire year. I'm so happy to be fully invested in Mezco and I cannot recommend this figure enough. The Mezco 112 Collective Punisher figure. There you have it guys. Hope you enjoyed my top 17 of 17. Let me know in the comments what was in your top 10 or top 17 of the year. Not next episode, but the episode after that. I think it's episode 202. I will do my favorite hot toys of the year. Probably a top 10 list of hot toys that I purchased this year. So look forward to that. And then possibly episode 203 is going to be my most anticipated figures for 2018. So look forward to that as well. But Again, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and watching. If you did like this video, if you liked my top 17, give a thumbs up. I absolutely appreciate it when you guys do that. Uh, it means a lot to me. I had a lot of fun in 2017 collecting. I hope you guys had just as much fun in 2017. I look forward to 2018. I look forward to bringing you more videos in 2018. I look forward to watching your videos in 2018. Have fun collecting. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks again and adios.